Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Naruto Explain here, bringing you guys another Boruto 2 Blue Vortex discussion. Today, I want to shift gears and look at why everything that has happened in the Sand Village might not be as random as we're thinking, which is why in today's newest Naruto Explain video, we're going to look at why the Sand Village being attacked and Konoha sending other Shinobis back up. It might be the start of something even larger for Boruto's character and why narratively there are unintended consequences. If that is the path that the narrative is choosing to go down, this will be a monumental moment for Boruto's character in a way that I don't see enough people talking about. So getting right into it, I think the general consensus is that while Konoha is going to send back up to the Sand Village now that they've officially requested assistance, and most of us believe that that's going to evolve Sarda and Kawaki to a degree, I think we need to flip the table around and look at why there stands a high chance that Boruto is going to be headed there as well. And that has way more meaning and significance than you might originally think. So allow me to explain to you exactly what I mean. Boruto knew that going into Konoha the first time, it wasn't just going to be Konoha was going to be in trouble if he didn't stop code during his invasion and destroy the Ten Tails. When the chapters were first coming out, there was this common consensus that Boruto was being extra desperate to tell code to let him know where the Ten Tails was and... He was even trying to reason with him at times for all that hard edge talk that Boruto hit code with. He was still trying to give him an out and eventually the point where it became clear not only was Boruto fed up trying to reason the code, but he was also now shifting gears towards picking violence as his option. Yet when he used the Rasengan Uzehiko or as overpowered as attack it was, given how composed Boruto looked and how quickly he gathered the chakra for the attack, it became clear that hey, Boruto was still holding back, which cemented his scaling in the minds of a lot of people that Boruto had clearly become a demon in terms of power level, following the time skip. Yet, even after leaving Code clearly at his limits and needing only one attack to do that much damage to him, Boruto was still not going for the kill. In spite of everything he said about killing Code, and he was still trying to reason with them. That was our sign that Boruto's words about the Tentels, they were different. That it wasn't just what he told Code about them harvesting a chakra fruit, but that his warning to Code that he changed the natures of the Tentels ran deeper than what we were seeing with them seeking out anything that had chakra to devour. And by anything, I mean literally anything because one of them wanted to eat Chocho and not because she has some extra meat on the bones. It was one of the few times in Boruto 2 Blue Vortex or Boruto's desperation, it truly shined through that this time, this was going to be a moment where Boruto could not fail. The story then took it a step further, showing us that Boruto, in spite of his words in chapter 80 of Boruto Naruto Next Generations, where he said he settled things to Kawaki later on, he wasn't focused on fighting Kawaki. Even when Kawaki made it clear he was planning to kill Boruto, his priority had never left code and getting the Ten Tails, leaving a cryptic warning to Kawaki that he didn't mind dying in Konai, he was fine with it, but that day it wouldn't be today. And now that we know about the Ten Direction Shinjutsu, we know that Boruto knew they were headed down the worst possible path where everyone would die, which is why he was so desperate to ask Ko for help, despite knowing that Ko was someone who in several possible timelines that Kashin Koji saw successfully created a chakra fruit or he indirectly led to the harvesting of a chakra fruit due to Ko's actions. It showed how desperate Boruto is in hindsight, which is why I don't think we can ignore what happened in the Sand Village when it comes to Boruto's character. Boruto, if we assume when he teleported away, went back to the hideout that he shares with Kashin Koji, then he is now back inside the land of wind, which makes him the fastest possible person to even respond to the damage that's done to Sunagakuri. There's no way that Kashin Koji didn't have any intel on what was happening in the land of wind, particularly the Hidden Sand Village, not when Matsuri was specifically looking for the person they believe was helping Boruto. Boruto is more likely than not going to make it a point to head there, likely the same method of having Toads infiltrate the Hidden Sand Village and then teleport afterwards to look at what was happening there, which is not crazy to think so. Boruto, he is an Otsutsuki. He can mask his chakra, and we've seen that when he wants to do so, Boruto can do it very well. He just chose not to do so when he arrived in Konoha for the first time, which looking back at it, that's an all-time Boruto flex move right there. Here, returning to an area that 
was just looking for him and on high alert so soon after he just escaped Konoha, it is more likely than not that Boruto is going to take that precaution to hide his chakra to investigate what happened. If for no other reason than both not to draw attention to himself as well as the Shinju that are out looking for him. Hashin Koji has more than likely foreseen all of this with his 10 direction Shinjutsu. He's going to have seen Shinki turn into the Shinju called Ryu and he's going to know that Boruto is going to want to survey the damage in order to see if there are any more possible Shinju they need to worry about. At this point, it's almost a moral obligation because he appears to have taken the stance that everything falls on him to handle said threat. The only questions will be are is Kashin Koji going to let him do so and if he does what strategic advantage does Kashin Koji see in order to sign off on this which brings me to Boruto and Shinki the substance of the thumbnail itself. There are a lot of things we don't know about the Shinju particularly the ones that are made out of chakra from those who are bidden in order to become Shinju. We know that the people, they are all affected by omnipotence, so in their minds, Boruto's the outsider and Kawaki is a Hokage son. Yet, with the Awakened Shinju, we see no indication that this applies to them. In fact, when you look at Jura, we see the opposite. Notice how Jura referred to Boruto as Boruto Tsuki, but when he's slapping Kawaki away from the village, literally slapping him across the village, he also refused to call Kawaki by the name Kawaki Uzumaki. He called him Otsuski, which... That is an intentional choice by the narrator to not tip his hand so as if the Shinju know the truth or not about omnipotence or if they're even affected by it. Think about it. Jura knew all the names of all the people in Konoha and he's reading all these books in his hideout. Books that contain information about the ninja world. Literal data books in a way since he flipped through one of the books and he found information on Shikadai which leads me to believe there's a chance that the narrative is hiding this reveal until we see how Shinki reacts to Boruto. Someone who was a former rival to Boruto and who in the manga story, the last time we saw him, he had unfinished business with Boruto, was annoyed that Boruto had helped the Kage, including Shinki's father, the Kaze Kage, fight against Momoshiki, and he wanted to fight Boruto and meet Boruto again. Boruto being Shinki's target, or rather Ryu's target, it could get interesting because of what that means. On a certain level, they retain some instinctual information. But as we saw, each of them, they grow at different rates than others. If he targets Kawaki, then we know that the effects of omnipotence, which manipulates the chakra in the brain of people who alter their memories, that carries over to the Shinju, which makes sense. They're all made from said people's chakra. But it also would explain why Jura, the Ten Tells itself, seemingly is implied to know who is who in that regard when it comes to Boruto and Kawaki. If he targets Boruto, then we know that all the Shinju know the difference between omnipotence and reality, like it's implied that Jura is aware of. Things could get dicey very quickly, and I don't think it's a mistake that we saw the Shinki Shinju reveal in the same chapter with Kashin Koji's potential futures that he saw in the same chapter where Boruto is told if he chooses to save Sasuke, the possible timeline that they're currently following, it is the worst possible future and it's the one that Boruto's trying to save and change because in this future, Boruto's supposed to die. There might be something more in all of this and running back Boruto versus Shinki, it has potential from a narrative perspective, particularly when you consider this being a clash of two children of Kage though one isn't recognized as the child of Akage anymore and the other has no memory of being a child of Akage anymore, which it should be worth noting. Boruto and Shinki never fought in the manga. That was anime only, but Shinki does have a fascination with Boruto in the manga. There are a lot more layers that could come as a result of this fight, layers that will be important to Boruto's character, for being honest. So let's go a little deeper here. So when Omnipotence first took place, Sasuke told Boruto if he's going to prove himself as being Naruto's son and overcome all the bad in terms of the bad hand that was given to him regarding omnipotence that Boruto would have to overcome the hatred he's facing similar to how Naruto did. Basically saying to us as the audience that when Boruto asked Naruto at the end of the Momoshiki fight to tell him more of his story whenever Naruto had time, Boruto's now going to be forced to relive and learn some of those lessons that Naruto did and one of those lessons was being able to look a fellow monster in the face and confront his darkest demon which for Naruto that was Gaara and how easily himself and Gaara 
could have ended up on different paths had their lives have been swapped around. Whereas Gar had a father who tried to kill him and even multiple times was the reason that Gar was being betrayed by love. Naruto, who was left isolated and was very slowly establishing bonds to fill the hole in his heart that had been so deprived of love, Naruto eventually was able to meet Gar in the middle and reach him. And just with that Naruto fight, that was a battle between two children of Kage. Right now, Boruto and Shinki, that is a potential battle. It gives Boruto the chance to stare down Shinki, a fellow child of Akage, like how Naruto was a fellow child of Akage with Gar. But whereas Naruto had to overcome the hate with showing compassion and mercy to someone filled with hate and gar, Boruto has to unleash a darker side in himself in order to take down Shinki's Shinju clone because he owes it to him. If for no other reason than the fact that he failed to destroy the Tentails, which in turn caused Shinki to become a Tentail Shinju, this battle is needed so that Boruto can face the consequences of his actions. This is different than something like battling Hidari, the Shinju who was made from Sasuke's chakra because that was done when Boruto himself was too weak to stand and fight beside his sensei. That represented a battle to overcome his shame and to right the wrong that was caused by his shame. This battle, however, is meant for Boruto to take full responsibility for his failure because unlike when Sasuke was defeated, Boruto had the power to prevent this. He just got to the Ten Tails too late, but he is physically strong enough where he could have destroyed the Ten Tails. He failed to strike down the Ten Tails. Matsuri then went to the Land of Wind looking for Boruto, looking for the person that was helping Boruto, and Matsuri in turn ended up attacking the Sand Village based on the info we have. Boruto is the one who deserves the payoff of defeating Shinki right here, and or at the very least, playing a direct role in it. His character, it is in need of some wins. He's had a lot of near victories, but near victories are not victories. He nearly pulled off a heist by using code as a puppet to get to the Tentails and destroy it, but he failed. He nearly managed to save Sasuke by using a full power Rasenga Uzuhiko on Hidari, a, a close to full power Uzuhiko, but he failed to secure the Thorn Soul Bulb that was required to do so. Close isn't victory. Close is merely good enough for moral victories, but with someone in Boruto's situation, there is no close. There are no moral victories. You either succeed or you fail. There's no in between here. The situation is way too dire. While there's a chance that Boruto still fails to save Shinki, something that I do think is increasingly likely, given that Boruto seems destined to have all these close victories, but no clear outright victories, even with code, there's an asterisk next to that because he needed him alive, so he allowed him to escape. And with Kawaki, he couldn't finish the fight because he needed to flee or lose control via karma. While it's likely that this is just the next in a long line of L's of Boruto, with even more Shinju being created in the future, I do believe if the story wants to give Boruto a clearly defined victory, this is the moment. Just as it did when it allowed Boruto to save Himawari from Jura. That was his only real clear victory in part two. I guess you could add in him saving Sarda, but that's debatable since Sarda did help him fight afterwards. The idea of saving someone who is considered a rival to him, it has a poetic feel to it. Almost as poetic as the new Black Clover video essay on the left from my Anime Explained channel or the new Sarda video essay I just uploaded here on Naruto Explained. 